revolutionaries. Got a treat coming your way. Fernando Rocha, who is VP of IT and CIO at Aeromexico. Now, if you're not familiar with Aeromexico, it is Mexico's global airline and a leader in Latin American aviation. Fernando, welcome to CXO Revolutionaries. Thanks for having me here. Oh man, we're gonna have a good one today. <laughs> So you've worked in IT for 25 years, worked across Latin America, US, Europe, and now you're leading a major IT transformation for Mexico. Uh, tell us a little bit about that transformation that you're leading. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a huge journey to evolve the company and, and bring much more experiences to our customers, so it's about a lot of effort in improve our technology, but mostly improve the service and experience that we provide to our customers. So it's, a, it's an interesting uh, long journey. It's a lot of work, but sup super exciting. So I, I noticed that this IT transformation has really been out there in terms of in the media, Forbes is featured in Forbes. And you said that IT transformation is a long and hard journey. And it's not about technology, ultimately, it's about people. That's right, that's right. I think it's easy to think that um, you can change technology or acquire a new application or any solution and think that you are transforming, but it is not true. So the, the real challenge is about um, help the team, mm -hmm. the company, think different. It's about changing the culture, it's about evolving people, the people, but also the organization as a whole. So it, it's a huge um, challenge um, and, and it's exciting. That, that's why it's very exciting because, you know, learn a new technology is very easy, but um, help the people to evolve themselves, it's, it's more challenging. Yeah, when he's, when he's, a lot of people think probably when they're tuning into this interview, Right, here's an interview with a CIO. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about just the technology. And here you are, so it's talking about the people side. That's right. So what's your advice for leaders who want to, like, like they need to have a IT transformation inside their organization, but they're running into resistance and they're running into people not want to mm -hmm. change their ways? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's important to uh, surround yourself with people that want to Mm. evolve, want to learn, that feel that they want to build something different, build something new. So I would say the advice is um, don't bring people around you that has large experience or knows about technology, but bring people mm. that want to learn something new, that want to build something new. So is this something that you're looking to identify in the, like you're, re, you're rebuilding a team or how, how are you develop or instilling that mindset in the people that are already there? Are yeah, it, it's it's not necessarily changing okay. the people, but it's thinking different. It's thinking about what we are going to learn today and mm. what we want to learn together collectively. Um, so for instance, this year, we've been learning so many things. I remember um, when we, when we're, I remember when I came for the first, first time at the reInvent, and uh, I came here to, to learn about AWS and we had this strategy already, but we are just learning. And then I was totally scared. Totally, totally. <laughs> Tell it, me more, why, why Yes, were exactly, because it was so many things happening, mm. so many services, technologies, mm. and uh, I said, oh my God, this is huge. I mean, it's, it's, it's I don't know how, bring this huge Where do we start? Uni exactly, <laughs> universe to the company. So it was oh. really scary, believe me, it was totally scary. And I remember when I arrived uh, back to the office and I shared my scariness with the people. I said, hey, I'm scared. Because there's so many things, <laughs> new things we don't know. Mm. It, it's scary when there are a lot of things you don't know. And yeah. I, I could share this feelings to everybody and now everybody's scared as much as me. <laughs> so that was a good thing because we said, hey, what we're going to do about it. So then mm. we, we, we'll be building this journey together. I like that. And I, 
the words that come to mind for me is you help them identify their learning edge. Mm -hmm. And like when you're on the learning edge, it is a little scary. Not all, little, it's a lot of scary. scary. <laughs> but also it can be exciting. And that, it, it is. It can trigger excitement yeah. for the opportunity. Right, right. And the uh, feeling of learning mm -hmm. and building, and when you look back, back, it's so exciting, so you feel so um, pleased about the things you are building. Yeah. I like that. And it's important, I think, for leaders listening to this interview it's one thing to help your team learn and grow, but you've got to remind them how far they've come. Correct. Because am I right, in an organization, there's always more to do and learn, and you want to go on to the next thing and learn it. That's right. But you increase their morale and to keep a positive attitude by saying, hey, look, I know we got more to do, but look how far you've already come. Yeah, and that's about consistency because mm. you have to be consistent in your vision, in your message, because as as much as you go, you have to build on top of things you've been building. So it's it's about uh, consistency. It's about resilience. It's about getting getting oh, done. Yeah, and then we're tying it back to the airline industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's important. To be there's a lot changing. Yep. In the airline industry, there's a lot of threats, a lot of challenges. You got flights going. All the time. Yep. People's lives on those planes. Right. And here you are, the senior executive in charge of all the IT stuff. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? It's it's <laughs> rewarding, actually. It's rewarding. It's okay, challenging, but rewarding because you know you can make a huge difference with so many people. Um, every little thing we do can be huge impact in, in, oh, in the so lives of so yeah. many people. So we, we be, we've been building a lot of stuff that I'm proud to share that we know that people can use it, make things easier, checking faster, um, you know, uh, change your flights when you need it in an easier way or anything related travel easier. So I read that when you started at this organization in Mexico, you came in and there were just a lot of different systems and they weren't working well together. A lot of things weren't talking. Things weren't talking. Yeah, I think... Um, What's been the big change? I, um, I was uh, lucky to say that the, um, the, the systems, the, the whole infrastructure was very good. Yeah. We, we, do, we didn't have any, you know, big problem. I think the big problem was that they were siloed. They were isolated, they were not connected, and there was no vision moving mm. forward to bring these pieces together. So, but that, that's a good thing. So I think the team did a very good job in ensuring that the day by day was working, but could be much better, much easier, much faster. And, and that's what we are doing now. Mm. So it's, it's um, it, I was looking in this sense. So starting to, starting to kind of reach back in, in the archives a little bit, where did you grow up, and, and did you ever think you'd be CIO <laughs> of a major airline? No, I don't almost even remember when I started. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm a Brazilian, so I did um, engineering, um, uh, production engineering, um, factory engineer. So when I started, I think Bill Gates was starting Microsoft, so there was no <laughs> huge career. <laughs> That's your parallel is, is yeah, Bill Gates, okay. Yeah, it was pretty much at the same time. And uh, I remember my first job was with Unilever, big mainframes, and we had this hmm. project to downsize for Unix and open platforms. So, I mean, changes was all the time since mm -hmm. my very first day of job. So, yeah. So Unilever? other companies, and Hershey. So you're essentially trying to work in every industry, I guess. Uh, yeah. you, so how did you end up getting into an airline? Because mm -hmm. we're for some pretty big brand names, organizations, but never an airline before. Yeah, again, I think I was very lucky um, to be almost 20 years with Unilever. It, it's excellent company, so the CPG industry is very sophisticated from mm. IT perspective. A yeah. uh, lot of process, a lot of solutions that has to be 
um, work really, really well. So uh, I think I started in an environment that had a very good IT, very good company processes. So I think I was lucky to, to experience this. So about moving to the airline, I, it was, um, um, I was um, called some day saying, hey, there is this position, you might be interested. I said, it's too good to be true, I mean. And you were at Hershey at the time, right? Yeah, that... so, correct. So, um, <laughs> Wait, I, candy I said, to airplanes. I, I, I always uh, had a very good connection with Mexico, so yeah. I lived twice in Mexico, now my wife mm. is Mexican, so when they called, I said, no, it's, it's uh, interesting. So mm -hmm. I said, I, I might go, but it, let's see how it goes. And it was easy, the process of identifying myself with the company, with the people I talked, it was so uh, good mm. communication, good alignment, good, and, and I think the company was looking for this change, and I think, I, again, I was privileged to be in the right time, the right moment, yeah. I love it. When I was doing my research, I was like, here's a guy who's gone from soap to candy bars to airplanes. Yeah, and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's and like, lots this, of this chocolate. Really I miss this, a uh, lot of chocolate. Did you get a lot of free chocolate? The, and, yeah, at the, the meeting rooms, you have bowls of chocolates everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna put you on the hot seat. Mexican chocolate versus U.S. chocolate. Okay, I think all chocolates are very oh. good. <laughs> Those are very politically <laughs> apropos. I love have, chocolate, chocolates have, all have the time. Have you had the Mexican chocolate covered grasshoppers or crickets? Yes. You have? What yeah. Do they call them? I, I, well, I did once, but I, that's my not favorite. Okay, no. that wasn't it. No. I, Too I, much no, crunch. It was salty crickets, okay. not chocolate. I forgot crickets. what they were, what, what they call them. Do you know the name of uh, the uh, chocolate? Chapolinas. Chapolinas, Chapolinas, yeah. 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 So good. They have spicy, spicy Mexican chocolate. I love yeah, that. I, I love that stuff. Yeah, that's, that, that's nice. For me, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> no offense to Hershey. <laughs> All right, so let's, so we kind of walked through your early career there, and what's the bit of advice that you would give your younger self, or what would you have tried differently? Yeah. I think it's about, um, yeah, uh, um, never quit in what you want. So um, visualize what you want to be and, and work hard and you will get there. So that nothing is impossible. I think that's the, the I think I've learned this in life. Anything mm. is possible. I, I, I remember during my career discussing situations where now this is not possible. It's too expensive or too complex. No, mm. it's it's it, it might be not easy to get there, but it's always possible. So just to have that fortitude to continue in your career, even when the challenges are big. Yeah. Uh, was this something that was instilled in you at a young age? Well, I guess you're looking back, so you would recommend it. When when for you did it really trigger that this is a key trait for success? Yeah, I I think I always was curious about learning. Mm. Again, when I was perhaps 14 year old, I was reading, uh, you know, Microsoft Basic and learning oh, computing. Okay. Right. At that age, in a time that there was no computer available, I remember I said, Dad, I want a computer. And what is computer? I mean, what are you talking about? It, it was not available. I mean, there was this big mainframes, but no personal mm. computer at that time. It was before PCs. Actually, my first computer was a TRS-80. And <laughs> um, yes, it was, at that time, mm. there was Commodore, but it was rare. Power just just very, things. very, very crazy people talk about that. And uh, it, it was totally uncommon, but it, it was about learning something new. And, mm. and I always had this feeling of um, seeing something. I, I remember when I was young and going to a bank with my dad and there was this, I don't know, 10, 20 lines and a lot of people waiting. And again, I was like eight, 10 year old saying, it's, it's waste of time. There might be a different way to 
get, mm -hmm. I remember that, mm -hmm. saying, I, I don't want to be here like one hour to pay it something. And um, yeah, so I think that curious about learning something and technology and, and do things better was always in my DNA since very young. I love that. That's no doubt serves you well in your career as an IT professional, but also being willing to go to different industries. I mean, you could have just stayed in Unilever, right? Or you could yeah. have stayed in Hershey. Mm -hmm. But you're willing to take these skills and learn what you need to about other industries and take them with you. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not afraid of something new. I think that's also something. Because it, it, it's airline industry is a lot of, it, it's complex business. It's not simple. Yeah. So, but it's, I feel this as, oh, it's cool. It's, I want to learn this. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, man. Well, let's, so if you could instill one trait in every employee, what would it be and how would that make things different? Yeah, that, 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 that curiosity mm. of mm -hmm. wanting, people wanting to learn something new and doing something best, the, yeah. the best or better, I think that's, that's for me the, the one thing. If we walked out of this interview and you saw that, how, how do you think the world would be different if everyone was able to maintain that curiosity? What would it be like, you think? <laughs> Imagine that world. Yeah, it would be fantastic. It would be simple, easy, and accessible to everybody. Yeah, oh, so good, man. So when did you have a twist or failure in your career, and how did it lead to your success or growth on down the road? Yeah, that's, that, that <clears throat> are the tough moments, and have several fails, failures. I, I'm trying to do everything right <clears throat> all the time, and it's very, very painful when you know you do, you do something that doesn't work. And, and I can tell you a story, again, it was at the time with Unilever and I had a coach and at that time I, I might have like my career like eight year, 10 year perhaps uh, with Unilever at the time. And we were discussing about developing career, etc. And he asked me, tell me about your failure. I said, I never, never failed. Everything worked. <laughs> And then he uh, said, yeah. you know yeah. what? This is your problem. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? Yeah, he said, um, you, mm. you were afraid to fail. Mm. You were afraid to fail. I said, yeah, yeah. You prefer to play small games and win instead mm. of try to play big, big games and fail. Mm. And I said, you know, I mean, it sounds easy now talking, but it was a very tough conversation at the time. And yeah. um, I said, that was a very, very important moment in my life. My career said, yes, I'm afraid to fail. And um, I, need, I need to change. I, I want to play bigger games. So that's, that was when I had to jump into the you know, darkness about I, I have to be prepared to do mm. something and fail and learn. So at that moment, it was very tough for me, but now it's fun. It's about you learn, you do, it doesn't work, you just move on. But it took for me a couple of time to, to be ready for this. The mindset. failure was not having failed. Exactly. Which I think is probably a wake-up call. Exactly. And the failure was being comfortable playing the small game. Yep. Man, I can so relate to that. Yep. Early on, too, I was like, Make a mistake is bad. Mm -hmm. I don't want to share it. Even make a mistake. It's yeah. quickly, how quickly can I clean it up and act like nothing ever happened versus taking the time to really understand what right. happened and then trying to play a bigger game. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Man. So, so good. Well, let's, I want to make sure that we have time to r really dig in a little bit more on what's going on in the airline industry right now. Technology is moving at a breakneck pace. Also, security threats. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's scary to think about, I mean, what could go wrong in, in the aerospace industry? How are you guys thinking about cybersecurity mm -hmm. and, and the airline industry right now? Yeah, again, it's about culture and people. Again, I mean, mm -hmm. it's about mindset that security first, safety is first, security is first. So we can do, we, we, we cannot do anything without thinking security first. So 
everything we do has to be secret first for everybody all the time. So it's it's build this mindset and and keep it consistently uh, talking, learning, and having some failures, but saying, hey, I learned this, let's improve this, and let's improve that. What are you doing to stay ahead of the game? Obviously learning from your own mistakes, but you seem like a, a leader who's really fostering that learning mindset. What resources or tactics are you using to help help yourself stay ahead of the game? It's um, uh, during your life, there is a, always some um, moments, there is this temptation to do shortcuts and do the easy things. Mm. So I think the what we try to do, it's always the right thing, doesn't matter how hard it is. So it's mm. not being tempted to do, uh, I don't know, you, you were using this old version of database, uh, we, we, we can keep it, or me, no. You have to make this up to date, you have to make this better. I mean, it's really hard work to make this every time the right thing and no mm. shortcuts. Demand excellence, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. How because there that? is no yeah. opportunity for any, uh, as you said, it's it's a big thing. It's a big thing. As a, as a CIO, how do you think about developing your own talent inside and when do you identify when it's time to, hey, I need to partner with a third party mm -hmm. or I need to get outside help? How do you, how, how are you, how do you process that? Yeah, I think um, you have to work, work together with the company, with HR and, and the whole company and this talent management process where you have to identify critical roles, identify mm -hmm. your critical talent and develop and retain talent and, um, and, and bring new talent as required. required. So some, some roles are very difficult to bring mm -hmm. in, so you have to develop in-house. In so I think it's a combination of under, understanding of what do you need, what knowledge or what attitude do you need, mm -hmm. and scale with partners. So it's impossible to work alone. So you have to have partners that can be with you scaling, um, yeah, the, the knowledge, the attitude, etc. With artificial intelligence now taking such a prominent place mm -hmm. in the news, in businesses, mm -hmm. and accelerating, what excites you the most about artificial intelligence in the airline industry and what you do, and what's the most concerning? I think what is exciting is that it's today it's easy to start it. I mean, you can start. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's not yeah. complex. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's simple, mm -hmm. but it's much easier than 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's accessible, so you have, it's easy to do it. So this is exciting. It's, it's not, you can do amazing things in a couple of weeks. So it's, it's not complex. Um, and, and that's exciting because I think the challenge is align priorities and, and there are mm. so many opportunities to do mm -hmm. so you have to align what things you want to tackle as a company but uh, I think in terms of what's scary is um, it's so fast and it's so much um, thing of, that is available so my, my concern is about putting all the framework the, the guard rails to use this in the right way protecting data um, mm -hmm. securing uh, the data. I feel sometimes that we have to be all, always ahead to ensure that you have the right framework to build those uh, solutions in the right way. So I think it's about uh, ensure that the speed of these things, you cope with this speed. That's, I think, it's my uh, most yeah, the, scary. Yeah, mm -hmm. the accessibility and the ease and, and Exciting, be, but the speed exactly is, that's is the part you because it's easy. For. It's a scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, rate, so. exactly. So starting to wind this up, Fernando. One day, when you leave Aero Mexico, mm -hmm. what do you hope your leadership legacy will be? You always want um, let some legacy. I think what I wanna. It's not about any solution or capability. So it's about having a strong IT team that can continue to build those 
um, solutions in the right way. So it ensures that um, this mindset continues. Uh, a good reminder for all of us that our legacy is ultimately left through people. Yes. Not the things that we create, but the That's people it. we influence. Yeah. It's a always about message. people. Yeah. And so just building on that, what's your, what's your parting thought for our, our, our audience today? Yes, it's, it's about people. It's about um, understanding and collaborating because I think the exciting thing is that uh, I love to be in a room with people that are much more smart than you. That, that makes mm. me exciting because you are learning. Because again, it's about learning. It's about doing something new. So yes, that's, that's the message. Uh, I want to be in a room with people that's smarter than me. Uh, well, hopefully you felt that way today. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully. Absolutely. I learned a lot from you. Fernando, thanks for coming on CXO Revolutionaries, my friend. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.